these natural products like NAD precursors that are talked about a lot in the aging field and alpha ketoglutarate, um, they go. They tend to go down with age. They're important uh, metabolites, and so they uh, reduce the sort of the metabolic flexibility of the cell with age. The problem with trying to understand what they're doing is they participate in like like uh, AKG is in over 500 uh, enzymatic reactions in the cell. And so if you want to figure out what the proximal effects are that are linked to aging, you've got a challenge on your hands. And we've been struggling with that. Uh, we can show that it improves adult stem cell function, that they hit these hallmarks and pillars of aging like a lot of other interventions do. But what we really want to know is what's the direct activity of AKG. And so we're trying to sort through that now. There are a few clues. alpha ketoglutarate doesn't easily get taken up by cells. So um, it, there are certain tissues like liver and kidney which just, and red blood cells which take it up. Uh, and, that's ex and that gives us a target area to look at. So we think that one of the things AKG does is it improves glutathione production in red blood cells, which is important because they're carrying a lot of oxygen around and there's a lot of reactive oxygen damage in those cells. Uh, but we're also looking at different uh, metabolic effects in the kidney and other things right now. So I don't really have the full answer. It's probably not just one thing that's relevant to aging, but uh, we're still sorting among the possibilities. There are interesting microbiome effects of AKG as well. Uh, we do have human data. We published a uh, study, clinical study a few months ago showing that 42 users of this rejuvent product, which is... Uh, Product made by PDL Health uh, that contains alpha ketoglutarate plus low dose vitamin A for men and low dose vitamin D for women reverses biologic age by about seven years using one of these methylation clocks. Now, first of all, I'm affiliated with that company, so full disclosure. Uh, second of all, we didn't have a placebo control, those are just people buying the product. So, um, I don't think it's the final validation that it works in humans, but it's very encouraging. And now we have a clinical study performed uh, in, in the state of Indiana uh, that we're analyzing the data from. And it looks like we might get signals for other aging clocks as well. So uh, we're in, and that is placebo control. So we're encouraged. Uh, and uh, I, I think that we need to take these interventions that may affect aging and test more of them in the context of these biomarkers to see which ones work the best, but, but more specifically to find which individuals, which interventions work in. I think that it's going to be a personalized approach to understand aging, not just the, um, give one thing to everybody. And we need to understand why some people respond to some interventions and, and some people don't. You know, we were uh, doing animal studies, looking at uh, not just aging lifespan, but frailty. And we found that vitamin A in low dose is very beneficial for the male mice, but not the females in ways we we're still trying to figure that one out. Uh, vitamin D is probably beneficial for both. So, but the thing is that we also found that when you start combining multiple interventions, you get unpredictable outcomes. <laughs> And so uh, this is something I would caution people about is there are now products out there that have 14 different longevity molecules in them or, or you can buy them separately and take them yourself. When I do mouse aging studies, once I get even at two and certainly at three, I can't predict the outcome of combining interventions. That's something we're very focused on in the lab right now. So, you know, if people want to be early adopters, yeah, I would suggest picking one or two things you're, that are your favorites and doing that um, and not just picking everything because I don't know what you're doing at that point. Um, also, with the vitamins, you know, these vitamins are in such widespread use. You know, I think the optimal approach to that really is to know the levels of your vitamins and micronutrients in your body and try to optimize those to a recommended amount. Uh, which would be in the high normal range. Uh, if you're taking too much vitamin, it can be just as bad as too little, particularly with something like vitamin A. So um, a lot of people go buy vitamins and just take them on faith, but really it'd be better if you knew what your vitamin D levels really are <laughs> before you go start taking things and, and only take the things that you need to be uh, supplemented.